Good evening. Good evening. <laughs> There's a lot of ways we could say that, but for the best, for the most part, you're welcome to be here. So it's great to have you here, guys. Uh, tonight we gather for Sunday evening vespers, which is a tradition here, seven o'clock on a Sunday evening. Uh, for those of you that perhaps worship is an important thing for you, but getting up on Sunday morning is not an easy thing for you to do. So you can come on Sunday evening and gather to worship. And we always have an awesome choir here on Sunday evenings. And so we welcome the chamber singers under, under the direction of uh, Dr. Sam, Samuel Barbara. And uh, it's good to have you all here tonight. And uh, we're so grateful. Um, Tonight we have a special evening with uh, Gene Natale. Gene's written a book called The Missing Semester, and uh, he'll be introduced in a couple moments. If you didn't get a copy of the book, raise your hand, because we want everyone to have a copy. Good, so it looks like everyone's good to go. Um, I believe that this evening may be one of the most important things you do during your time at Westminster College. And uh, because each and every one of you are going to graduate from here, we pray that that will happen sooner than later for some of you. Um, but we know that you're going to leave here. And reality tells us you're going to leave here perhaps with a little bit of debt. Uh, we hope that it's a wee little bit of debt and not a lot of debt. And we know that down the road, you're going to want to someday buy a car. Anyone want to buy a car someday? That's pretty much everyone. Anyone want to buy a house someday? Again, pretty much anyone, everyone. And how are you going to manage all that? And so hopefully through the next uh, hour, you'll get a sense for that as we spend time with, with uh, Gene. And uh, tonight, a uh, couple things. If uh, you have an interest in participating this week in a couple events that are coming up. One is uh, tryouts for Chapel Musical Theater come up on Wednesday and Thursday. Is that correct? And so if you'd like to do that, uh, just check emails. Make sure you show up on time. You'll see Matt uh, and some others who will be here. They're, we're going to be doing Susical, and it comes up in, I don't know, in March? Palm Sunday weekend, I believe. Yes, sometime after the first of the year. So if you'd like to do that kind of thing, if you're musical, you like to act, put all that together and be part of Chapel Musical Theater under the direction of uh, Matt this year. So we're grateful to him for stepping up and doing that. Um, on Thursday of this week, Thursday evening, if you're not doing that and you are interested, we're going to be taking a trip out to uh, Villa Maria, which is a uh, wonderful education and spiritual center nearby and we're offering an opportunity for you to attend a Tizay worship service. Uh, Tizay uh, is um, a reflective type of service with music, and it'll take about an hour. We're gonna leave about 6.30. It takes 15 minutes to get out there. Be back here by 8.15. So if you have other things scheduled on Thursday evening, uh, it's an opportunity for you to go and worship in a, a unique style. So I'm gonna pass this around, just put your name on the list, then we'll be in touch with you. When it gets to the back, if you'll jump it over and then bring it back to the front and then throw it up here on the front pew, if you would, please. Friends, uh, we welcome you to worship and I'd like to invite the um, chamber singers to come up uh, for our intro.
Thank you, choir. You guys sounded so good. Um, will you all please stand and join me with to the call of worship? <laughs> Tests, temptations, and trials happen to us all. We trust in your unfailing love. Our hearts rejoice in your salvation. We sing to you, Lord, for you have been good to us. Let us pray. Lord, we have questions, so many questions. We want to learn more about you, yet we don't know where to begin. Help us to find a starting place in your story. Through it, shed light upon our darkness, our wanderings, our doubts. Settle within us the discomfort that comes with the questions. Calm our deepest fears and anxieties as we find root in the word told to us this day. Amen. You may be seated. Oh! 
Proverbs 3, verse 9, honor the Lord with your wealth, with the first fruits of all your crops. Deuteronomy 8, 18. But remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you the ability to produce wealth, and so confirms his covenant, which he swore to your ancestors as it is today. Hebrews 13, 5. Keep your lives free from the love of money and be content with what you have. Because God said, never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. Thank you so much. Fire, awesome. Oh, you weren't moving a little bit with that. Um, tonight I want to invite a friend of mine, uh, Jesse Vigel, to come forward and introduce our speaker. Jesse is um, one of our professors. He's an accounting professor. He's the chair of his um, department, the School of Business. Thank you for helping me get that correct. And so Jesse has worked with Gene a couple times. And so I'm excited for Jesse to, to give you some uh, insights and invite uh, him to come up at this point. When Gene is finished, we're actually going to open it up for questions. So if you have questions that uh, you're thinking about, you want to write them down, this is a good way to do it. And so uh, you'll have the author of the book right here in front of you, and he's going to open your minds and your hearts. So Jesse, if you'll come up. Chris, we're going to use this mic. Thank you, Jim. That's one of the great things about uh, working at Westminster is you do get to meet so many people and have so many friends. And Jim, I appreciate you not referring to me as the chief SOB, which is one of the school of businesses. I've been referring to. Yeah, that, that's, that's what's happening. So I appreciate that. Uh, and speaking of friends, I would, it was through uh, the fact that I was at Westminster that I got to meet Gene Natale. And uh, we've become good friends. He's been here at Westminster at least three times before that I'm aware of. And uh, he spoke to the students in our kind of capstone class, and they really, really it had a big effect on him what he had to say. Um, I think the topic that we're going to learn about tonight is one of the most important things and, uh, that you can learn while you're still in college and while you're young. Because it's, the sooner you learn it, the sooner you apply it, the much better off you'll be. And, but I'll let uh, Gene take care of that. Gene is the Senior Vice President with C.S. McKee in Pittsburgh. That's an institutional investment firm. And he's a part-time lecturer at the University of Pittsburgh Cat School of Management. So he's been able to do what uh, I've always encouraged my students to do, find a job where your passion and your abilities intersect and you'll never have to work. You still have, you still have to go. But uh, he has an incredible passion for this topic. He's done an awful lot of work on it, reached out to a lot of people in a lot of schools. Um, and so we're really excited to have him here with us today. He also has a passion for schools like Westminster. He graduated from a liberal arts college, Allegheny, and was a swimmer there, and in the uh, His wife is Whitney, and they're fortunate to have four fairly good children yet. And uh, we're really excited to have Gene here with you today and asking you to give him your attention. Thanks so much for being here. Nice to be here. Uh, I'd like actually to meet each and every one of you. We'll stick around that for as long as, uh, as you have time and I have time. I'd love to shake your hand. I'd love to answer questions one on one. The uh, last day of my class at the University of Pittsburgh in the spring semester, I did bring all. Um, for my children, and it was a little bit of a uh, fly by the seat of your pants type class. But I'll tell you what, it was a ball. Uh, Jesse was, was being kind. My oldest at the time was four, my youngest was probably four weeks. So imagine those running circles around your, your class. Uh, it was a different kind of learning experience. Uh, yes, I am uh, very passionate about the subject that we are talking about today. I'm going to ask you and challenge you to keep an open mind. Take offense of nothing that I say, and to remember through everything that you, that we as individuals, are in control of the subject we're talking about. It is very powerful. Uh, my wife um, is maybe a living example, maybe it's why she has so much flexibility with letting me give these talks, and so much of my free time. Uh, I will just suffice it to say she had far more debt than any who graduated by semester with when she went to college. Uh, and I can say that with certainty. 
the question uh, that you see in front of you, the formula. Does anyone recognize that? <laughs> a lot of heads nodding. Here's a question for you. Think hard on this. Many of you learned that formula in an algebra class. You learned that at age 16, 36, or 56. Does the answer change? Guys, it's the same with the subject we're talking about today. A squared plus B squared equals C squared at every level of life. It's the same with your money choices. I've worked in this industry for now close to 15 years. I can tell you that our industry, the money management industry, does a terrible job of making this subject less intimidating. We make it far more complex than it has to be. Recognize that just like this formula you see in front of you, you can control your choices. So, oh, perfect. Was I, was I a little too quiet back then? All right. In the back, if I, if I do this, just everyone, everyone raise your hands up. Um, all right, let's jump to the next slide. So this, this was really fun. I, I told you the last day of class, my four children ran circles around the students. The first day of class, and this was a pure coincidence, a high school teacher, a friend of mine, sent me an email you see in front of me. Uh, it was a young man, senior, in this class. The behind the scenes story is his girlfriend didn't like the 1995 Subaru was driving, wanted him to go on a truck. So they were looking at trucks. He had saved $1,100 and found a truck that he wanted to buy. Went to the dealer, the dealer said, I'll tell you what, I'll sell you this truck, that 1996 Dodge Ram, you see I'll sell you that truck for $2,500 and I'll give you $500 for your suit. Gave that back to my students with this email. Said, guys, let's give this young man some advice. Ready, go. First thing they did was go to KellyBlueBook.com, put the cars in. What do you think they found? Which, which of those two cars do you think was the nicest? The Subaru. Turns out the Subaru was actually a higher value than the truck that he was going to buy. This was actually a really fun part of the discussion. These were my, my classmates and college seniors. They went all over the place. What if he does this? What if he does this? Finally, a young lady in the back row raised her hand and said, What if he starts a Roth IRA? Does anyone in this room have a Roth IRA? If you do, raise your hand. Two, three, four. Don't, don't raise them like this, guys. Raise them like this. That's a great thing. We're going to we'll talk a little bit about that later in the presentation. Uh, if you don't know what a Roth IRA is, you're going to learn today. And if you, if you don't know and don't want to learn, you're going to really be excited by the other slide, I promise. Um, so the lady said, okay, I like where you're going. I like that Roth IRA The Roth IRA for everyone else is a way to start saving for a time uh, at a young age. Uh, what the heck's the basic procedure you got to do to save for a time at age 18, right? That's crazy. But I don't think so. Neither the students in my class. So he's going to start this Roth IRA for $1,000. So how should he invest? The S&P 500 index. Anyone know what the S&P 500 is? Anyone take a stab at it? It's called the 500 largest companies in the U.S. How about that? It's a mutual fund. It's a vehicle where you just like buy by buying one share of the S&P 500. You own the 500 largest companies in the U.S. I like that. They Google that this is a great thing about having these laptops in the classroom and they're being used the correct way. They Google and said, Gene, holy cow, the S&P 500 has earned 10.9% a year going back for like 100 years. I said, okay, let's use that number. I said, wait, one, one last question. I said, when is this young man, how, how long is it going to be until he retires? So it's a rock or his retirement vehicle. They said, well, you know, my parents are retiring at 65. With all this health stuff happening, we're probably going to live a little longer, so let's use 70. I gave thumbs up for that as well, and they started typing away, putting the calculations in. And I saw just puzzled looks. I said, what's wrong? And a uh, young man in front of us said, Gene, my, my Excel spreadsheet is showing $226,000. He does nothing else for the rest of his life except put this $1,000 in the S&P. I said, you guys, I said, well, whatever else you did not have the same thing. Start over, you guys must have, you know, plugged it in. We do the same calculation. 
thousand dollars, starting at the age of 18, invested one time in the S&P 500, not touched until the age of 70. And they got the same answer, $226,000. Their eyes are now getting kind of big, and uh, the young man, also in the front row, his mouth of the student, actually hits his tape. He said, Gene, stop. He said, Gene, if this was possible, everyone would be doing it. It's not possible. I said, no, you're right. You're 22, you're a senior. How's yours go? And he just stared. He said, Gene, I don't have one. I said, not why don't you have one? Because this is possible. He said, Gene, I didn't know. And that's when a light bulb went off for me. Gene, I didn't know. Half of the students in my class have been over a lot that way during the spring semester. Very important tool. We're going to stop there in the subject, maybe dive back into the end. Something to get excited about. This is the lesson. The lesson isn't that we can turn $1,000 into $226,000. The lesson is if that young man had bought that truck, he would have used 100% of his $1,100 in savings. And he would have owed an, an additional $1,400 on the truck. You know, it was a 1996 truck. I think he'd had some maintenance issues. Maybe. The best money choices we make come long before you actually make an investment. And that is lost on many of us. The best money choices we make come long before we make our first investment. The problem is, and I love this as well, my brother and I used to buy penny stocks. We all want to get rich quick, right? Get that out of your head now. There's not a legal way to get rich with it. But a formula that works very well in this time is tested is work hard and work smart. I think you'll do really well. All right, so here's why I here's why I like to get in front of as many students as I can. This is the world you guys are graduating into. Unfortunately, did your high school guidance counselor share this with you? No. And it's just not being talked about. I don't mean to scare you with these slides, but this is a reality. Today, 76% of Americans live paycheck to paycheck. What are baby boomers? Soon be retired, soon be retired. Very good answer, that's correct. 97% of soon to be retired is not safe enough to retire. 55% of Americans are not safe enough to retire. Student loan number it is scary. So my class in Pitt last year, the students created a personal financial plan. Also in a committee in Pittsburgh where uh, college students created a personal financial plan. I've seen a number of college students that have six figure student loan. Over hundred thousand dollars. That's real. Eleven point six trillion is how much debt we have as Americans have. Isn't that scary? It's a big number. So no surprise that financial issues are the number one source of stress in America, both in the workplace and at home. Take a look at that big, bold sense of what we're Isn't that crazy? The first person of 150 years old is already in the world. The I can't take credit for that statement. It's become a, you know, you see that on CNN every now and then. It's because of the medical breakthroughs in healthcare technology. My uncle Dave is an emergency room doctor for the medical center. He always tells the young residents, make sure you pick a portion of the field that you really enjoy because you're going to be working for a long time. That's pretty good advice, guys, as you look at where you're going to come from Westminster. Pick a field you enjoy because you're going to be living a really long time. You're going to work in that career for a long time. Both of those are good things to consider. This is the world you're living in. Uh, this is a, a little more personal snapshot of that. In full disclosure, the first few slides here are a little bit negative. Remember my introduction? One, don't get intimidated, don't take it personally. Two, each one of these individuals will be controlled. This is America. We have an average mortgage debt. What's a mortgage? This will be uh, for sort of the lease we have in our house. Yep, that's what we owe in our home. The average American is $150,000 in their home. Student loan debt, you guys know that one well. Here's a fact in the credit cards that's fascinating. Average credit card debt is $7,000. Only half of Americans keep credit card debt. 
together not pay the ground to move. The path that keep it actually then that twice that dollar will pay 15,000. Because half of us are keeping our balance at zero. The Americans with credit card debt at 15,000. Question for you. What's the average of loan interest rate? Shout it out loud. What do you guys see on your loans? What will you be seeing? 8%. 8%? Is that a good number of others? Uh, 12 or 12, maybe 12. I've seen 6% in cases, so let's call that like 6 to as well, but 6 to 12 is a range. Uh, or, you have an idea in reading your Wall Street Journal or just the students here to follow this? Don't worry, they don't visit that. So the average share in a home, maybe 4%. How about credit cards? I, I heard OGs and a lot of numbers for that one. Um, they were all big numbers. Uh, so we're all familiar with credit card debt. Uh, so, so 13, I heard, I heard 16. Believe it or not, I have some credit card debt as high as 30. It's a good question. I was like, how's that even possible? Uh, it's not easy to get out. I would suggest, and I keep pointing at the screen, I'll start pointing behind me. A home is an investment, and your decision to come to Westminster is an investment. Credit cards are maybe a little bit different. Be very careful, guys. It is a big, big trap. Clearly, the unanimous people that talk to colleges across the country, I hear this too now. Does raise your hand during the talk? Slide. All right. So here, um, th this is important. Uh, my grandfather, he was 60 years ago now, was an OBGYN company. I still call him all the time. He came to help deliver my baby. Uh, he took two weeks off a year. Every August, he would pack his family in the station where I could drive to the lake, should talk to New York, and fish for two weeks. That was it. I'll bet he didn't even see a billboard the entire drive. The point I'm making is, for him to spend money was a lot harder than it is for you guys. Because now, not only are billboards outdated, you guys could all hop on your phone right now and spend $2,000 in two minutes, right? Easy. He had to work to spend his paycheck. You guys can spend your paycheck the day you get it like this. The reason that I may make that point is, and this is important for you to know, I'm a big proponent of you need a plan to be successful. Big proponent. Put it on paper, hold yourself accountable. But having a plan is not a silver bullet. Because who wants a piece of your paycheck? Everyone. I see heads not. Everyone. Not just boyfriends and girlfriends like the example, not just the government and taxes. Everyone. When you guys hop on online to the various social media, it doesn't matter which one you pick, how do you think those companies make money? It's selling advertisements. It's getting you guys to click to buy. It has never been easier to spend money. I really like this quote. That, that drives home that point. Everyone has a plan until they get punched in the face. Makes it even more important out of because that is true. Even with the plan, guys, life after college, it, it, it is wonderful. I, mean, I can't, I can I don't, I can go on for a long time, no other lesson like this. Uh, but it doesn't mean it's going to be easy every step. The better your plan, the better your chances. All right, so this is Pennsylvania. Is everyone, who's, if you're not in Pennsylvania, raise your hand. So a good substance. When I give this talk in different states, I update this number for the state uh, that it's in. This is Pennsylvania. We employ about oh, six million people just for, for sake of numbers. The pastor at my church is actually where I got this slide from. Um, so I won't take full credit for it. And the average salary of the six million people in Pennsylvania is about forty-four thousand dollars. And our pastor challenged us and said, if you make this forty-four thousand dollars. Where do you think that puts you in global annual income? Let's say there's 8 billion people in the world. Who's the richest? 
Bill Gates. That's probably number, yeah. We'll call Bill Gates number one. We'll call Gene's um, fourth child number eight million. And I want you guys to think where you would be with that salary. You're gonna be closer to Bill Gates, you're gonna be closer to Gene's fourth son. Get a number in your head. Let's go to the next slide there. Oh, freeze it. Technical, technical malfunction. All right, I'll give you the answer while we get the computer fixed. Um, believe it or not, if you make $44,000 a year, you are in the wealthiest 0.38%. Not 1%, the wealthiest 0.38%. You're the 25 million richest person in the world. Is anyone close, by the way? When our pastor asked us that was from my, my wife's here, saying, oh, but it's like this. I was so wrong in this fan casting. Uh, but we live in an era where if you're wrong, you say, boy, I didn't know that. You can, you can hop online and ways to find the answer pretty quickly. If you don't believe this, guys, you do the home, do it on your own. So, now think back to that, that earlier slide, that scare tactic slide. How do we get from here, the 25 million richest person in the world, to there? Are we not making that kind of money? We're probably making, I think people graduate Westminster and make enough money. The hard parts are kind of miserable to say it. I'll get you excited on it. Next slide. You know what, if we lose the technology, no, no big deal, if it works, it works. It doesn't, it doesn't. You just want to turn it off and ride with it, or? Um, yeah. If you had been restarted, and we'll be in there. Ah, so I'm just going to talk to you guys. We can, uh, without the slide, I'm going to have a wonderful cool, cool ability here, too. Uh, I'm going to stick in the negative connotation for one minute, and then I'm going to jump into the really positive. I promise. I'm going to do the positive one more here. Because think of that example, the, the slide of the high school school. The good thing that happened is he saved a thousand dollars. Became a big number, right? I want you guys to think in your head, if you save a thousand dollars every year, you'd like what would happen. If a thousand dollars at age of 18 could turn to 227,000, what could a thousand dollars every year of your life turn to? Here you think come on. I'll just take it to you guys that's a really good Okay, you're gonna graduate West Minister, you're smart. You're gonna get good opportunities. Are you gonna have a flat salary for life? No, what's gonna happen to your salary? It's gonna go up, it might go down a little bit here, but then it'll spike back up. What if you put a thousand away your entire life and your salary does do this? What can you do with the difference? Whatever the heck you want, right? Go to Hawaii, go there all summer if you want. The lesson here, guys, is as your salary increases, doesn't mean instead of one cheese, we're gonna need to have two, three, or 10 for dinner. Let your savings dictate your spending, not the opposite. That's critical. Let your savings dictate your spending, not the opposite. If you put that $1,000, that $1,000 away, first of every year, not the greatest time of your life for the rest of the year. A lot of people, when they give these type of talks, kind of preach that, well, you know, you've got to live in a cave, you know, don't go to Starbucks coffee, don't you dare get two, two bacon cheeseburgers for dinner. As long as you are letting your savings dictate your spending, that's why we work, guys. Two days. Just don't fall in the trap that most Americans do, let the spending, they let the spending come first. Uh, my brother, who is a financial advisor, which is why I work with institutions, he works with individuals. He had two clients um, five years ago now. They were sisters in their mid 50s. One of the sisters was a doctor, she married a doctor. We got a phone call from the doctor saying they agreed on it. had to declare bankruptcy. What does bankruptcy mean? You guys learned this at any point? Bankruptcy. Yep. <laughs> that wasn't, wasn't probably the textbook definition, but it was actually what an actor. Your mentor is really terrible. I mean, that's just sort of work on it, but you're still getting really hit back off of the last 
very bad health. But it depends on the individual situation. Here's the bottom line. Bankruptcy is bad. The bank owns the shirt you're wearing. Highly undesirable. How the heck do two doctors go bankrupt? It shouldn't be possible, right? It's easy, guys. I, I love to have an idea. It's easy. And they actually get out of jail free because the sister of the, of the wife, uh, who's a career secretary for like a U.S. Steel or something, she had over a million dollars saved in her bank. Same age. This is her doctor, sister, who married her doctor, who was bank. Uh, I love to kind of give the pretend assignment. You know, what if it says that, you know, you came tonight, you know, you could be home watching Sunday Night Football, but you came to listen to talk about money instead. Uh, what if because you came, Westminster gave every one of you a check for a billion dollars a week? A billion. It's a huge number, right? But it came with a cap. You have to spend every penny by this time next week to keep it. Who could learn how to spend a billion dollars in a week? And who would have a fun try? <laughs> Guys, it's, it is, it's easy to spend money. Uh, on, a, on a small tangent, I'm a very passionate outdoors, and I love hiking, hunting, fishing, you name it. I more just love being outside. And um, I hunted a farm in, in Hampton Township, and uh, just outside of Pittsburgh. And the farmer was telling me this story. Uh, across from his farm, uh, they built a big housing development, which is happening all over Pittsburgh. And right when they built this development, a gentleman who was building the mega mansion up on the top hill, it was a $7 million house, uh, came over and said, I just want to tell you, I, I, bought, I bought this land, I'm building this house because of how beautiful your farm is. And the farmer said, uh, I want you to know that I bought this farm because of how beautiful that hillside used to be. Uh, that's not the point of the story. The point of the story is that $70 million house, the gentleman foreclosed on it a year later. Anyone know what foreclosed means from the financial crisis? Anyone take a stab at that? He no longer owns a house. Yeah, he, the bank owns a house, guys. Can you grab it? This is, this is something I see a lot of. Uh, both at CSPT with the young people in our firm. Guys, the American dream isn't to graduate and buy the biggest house you can afford. No. Uh, that can actually come in a night if done incorrectly. Uh, but I don't know where the conception comes from. And, and I was playing poker with friends in there, and I was saying, would my bank approve me for this I'm dollar amount for my mortgage? I spent everything except two pennies on it. Good idea or bad idea? Bad idea, guys. The bank is saying, well, this is how much we have a high likelihood of them repaying us. They're not saying, well, he has these other expenses we should take into consideration. The bank is just looking at themselves first, saying, with this paycheck, he can pay this much back, highly likely. Just an example. Um, so we work back up there again. Let's jump a few. Where people jump? Jump a few here. Next slide. If it's not working, we just won't even, you know, if you just want to black it out, I have to deal with it. I'm not 100% fine with it. Um, so let me, last thing in the last thing in slide. I'm not going to ask you, I'm going to presume that some of you have credit cards. Uh, I know you don't. It's just not your head That's good. <laughs> uh, but of if some of you do. Let's say, just with this concept in everyone's head, if you looked at that number earlier, um, we, all of us fall for the credit card trap. And that we spend $5,000 over the next week on our credit card. But how many of us have a job that can pay $5,000 back in a month? We're students, so let's presume. None of us. But don't worry, because our credit card company gives us a statement that says, don't worry, you can just pay the minimum, which is like $15. If you make this mistake and only pay the minimum on your credit card, how long will it take to pay off a $5,000 balance? I won't embarrass you. Get a number in your head. It'll take you 56 years, guys. And that's assuming you don't make another purchase. Do you know how much your $5,000 bill just became? Get a number in your head. $27,000. Isn't that frightening? That's how credit card works, guys. You know, it's the same on these homes. If you buy a $200,000 home at a 4% interest, you know it actually costs you close to $350,000 or something? 
understand this. See, the, the point of kind of this culmination of stories is there's two types of people. And, and you're in control of which camp you're going to be. Those of us that understand interest rates. Those of us that don't. Which camp do you guys want to be? Those that understand. If you understand, you're going to take advantage of the good things that come with interest rates, like the young man at the high school I talked about earlier, who, by the way, took the advice of my students at Pitt, started his Roth IRA, did not buy the truck. He actually took their advice unanimously. Uh, so that was kind of neat to see. That's an example of a man who understands interest. The questions I get from students saying, hey, I have this much credit card debt, I don't have a job, I'm probably in camp of not understanding interest rates, but guess what, at least they ask the question. And now they can fix it. When it comes to money, never be afraid to say, I don't know the best. Never be afraid to say, I don't know. Boy, interestingly enough, every time she pops this back up, it's right on kind of the point where we are. Um, is it working again? Can we jump to the next couple of slides from there? All right, next slide. Okay, back, actually, back. That last one's a good one. This is a good one. This is fun, and after this, we're going to be all positive when we wrap it up here. Um, all right, guys, you're all so excited. You say, boy, I'm going to go um, buy a car. I'm going to buy a car for $15,000. Is everyone in this room going to pay $15,000 for that car? No. I see heads nodding. How come? Someone shouted out, why are we not all going to pay $15,000? Exactly. He said not all of us have been approved for zero percent. Said differently, all of us are going to have a different credit score. Guess what? What's a credit score? You want to take a stab at that? I get asked this question so often. What is a credit score? Right? It's kind of a representation of how dependable your credit is. So if you get yeah. a lot of bad things or you don't pay at all, your credit score goes down really fast. Correct. So I get asked that question so often in the college classroom, I, I tried to find out and better understand what the credit score, how it's calculated. I found out there's 56 different algorithms that calculate credit scores. And that is way above my pay grade. My conclusion from that was kind of just let's keep debt to zero, guys. You know, until you have that job that, that lets you, it's just not making an issue. But what if your roommates don't agree with you? They're not paying their electric bill. Guess what's happening to your credit score? It's going the wrong direction. That's how it can be impacted. Little things that, and look at the difference. We're all buying the same car. We're all buying the same car that has a $15,000 price tag on it. But those of you that get excited about this subject are gonna pay the $15,000. For those of you, maybe let's just point to the empty seats in the room right now, they're gonna like you paying the $19,122. That's a big difference. That's four thousand dollars. Think what you can do with that money. They have student loans. Probably have a little bit of a higher interest rate. They borrow savings. Remember that earlier conclusion: the best money choices we make come long before we buy our stock of bonds. This is another pretty good example of that. All right, so four, four, only, so four, raise your hand again, Roth, all right, raise really high. Just. One, two, three, four, five months. All right, when I'm back here in the spring, who's all going to raise your hand? Most of us, all right. Even those of us are like, what is Roth, I don't want to be the only one not raising my hand. All right, we're going to talk about it. Before we talk about it, does anyone have a 401k? I was just, I'm just curious. Uh, but any, stu any students have a 401k? Sometimes there's companies that in your summer internships actually give you a 401k, which is another retirement vehicle. It's a terrific kind of neat addition to the internship. Both are retirement vehicles. The reason that I'm here talking to you about retirement when it's the farthest thing from your mind is because guess when the best time of your life to start saving for time is? Actually, it was actually yesterday, but since only five of us took advantage of yesterday, we're going to plan for tomorrow. Okay? Now, there's a subset of you that are going to turn me off right now. Please do not. Age is a powerful opportunity. Simply being young is the best investment tool there is if you take advantage of it. And I'm going to show you a couple of slides on this point, unless we lose our technology again. Um, you know, we can actually jump, uh, let's jump on this one. Uh, 
I'm going to wow you because I don't know where I am on time. I'll be respectful. I'm just going to wow you with a couple things, and I want to get into questions. I want you guys to ask questions. I actually have a couple kind of challenge action items for you at the end. Here. Uh, if you've done this, just smile. And I would actually love to embarrass you because they don't want to mock the embarrass you. Uh, we're going to take this example right here. And start with a pen. You have to dig in your pocket and find a pen. Don't actually. You've got to come up with two pennies. You've got to come up with four pennies. You've got to come up with eight. We're going to double penny every day for 30 days. Call them up. Everyone start to get this guy face, you're going to go. Let's see what the dollars we get out of here. We're going to double a penny every day for 30 days. It's real easy at first to get this in a little bit more. I was at that, I like a dollar sixty four. It always gets this look out there. Uh, the, name, the number, the answer. Has anyone done this before? Just curious if anyone know the answer. <laughs> Let's just for fun rattle this front row. Up. There's no wrong answers. You guys are going to be like, price is right. Just rattle it out real quick with the microphone. How many dollars do you have in the money? Way too many. guys, you see a beautiful spreadsheet, how this happens. But guess what? That is not the lesson of this example. So what we're going to do now is take that 30 days, turn it upside down, and call that your 30-year working career. So bear with me. I see a couple people on their phones. They probably want to check to make sure I'm not lying about that number. Trust me, it's right. Bear with me for this example, though. Uh, there's some empty seats here. Let's say this row of empty seats. Here's about you guys talking about, wait, you start with a penny, we can make it $10 million. They say, holy cow, I want to do that. But they missed the first day. Because no matter when we start, we're still going to retire when we no longer work, right? So in our hypothetical example here, you have 30 years to work. Whether you start saving on day one or day 10, guess what? This is how long you can work. That's the way it works. We get old, we get sick, we retire. Things that make it stop working. Well, your friends in this empty row, they take the advice, they start, they miss the first day. What does that cost them? These are math makers. Any math makers in the room? And you don't even need to be a math maker. Just work backwards. We're doubling every day for 30 days. What happens if you cut 10 million in half? Isn't that insane? Your friends who missed today lose out on $5 million. This is a pretty awesome evening, wasn't it? This is worth coming to. Uh, so these guys are going to miss out on $5 million. This, the rest of this empty row here, though, they hear you guys talk and they say, ah, you know what, I'm young, I'm invincible, I'll worry about this stuff later. They decide to take off five days. You know what, in this hypothetical world, they say, you know what, we're, I'm going to live it up for a little while. I'll start saving when I get a little bit old. I want to make penny, guys. We all have a penny. Let's see what five days cost them. 10 million, we already did the work. If we miss one day, 10 million becomes five. Million. If we miss two days, five million becomes two and a half. If we miss three days, it becomes one and a quarter. If we miss four days, it becomes 500,000. If we miss five days, it becomes 250,000. Hey guys, how do we solve some of those numbers from that earlier slide? Start when you're young. Now I know some of you are going to be thinking, saying, but boy, oh boy, I, I have student loans I have to repay, I, maybe I have credit card debt. Um, here's what I actually have started to recommend. Put your first thousand dollars into a Roth IRA before you start paying your student loans. Still make the minimums on your student loans. Don't start paying extra on your student loans until you have that Roth IRA start. That's how valuable it is simply being young. Those of you that we still haven't grasped, we're going to get with the next slide here. This is real dollars. Uh, now, it's a hypothetical example because we're using that S&P 500. Full disclosure, I can't give investment advice. So take it for what it's worth. The average American begins investing at the age of 32. Similar to that last example where we take off five days. 
and these numbers are not chosen randomly. You'll see why at the end why I picked them. If the average American at the age of 32 starts putting $5,000 a year away into a Roth IRA, which is the vehicle that they invest in the S&P 500 index fund, they start doing that every year of their life from 32 to 65. They'll have $2.1 million when they turn 65. The hypothetical example is we're using that 100 year return model from the S&P 500. You guys with me here? You're ready to step back. I see a lot. I see a lot of heads nodding, but a couple maybe not. Okay, we're going to presume that you leave your excitement. Whether you can do start today doesn't matter. What matters is that you put a plan in place to start soon. And at the age of 22, everyone in this room is able to put 5,000 away in this S&P 500 index fund for the rest of their life. If you do that, you have $3.5 million when you turn 65. Big number, isn't it, guys? Let's just take a step back before we close this example. Remember that earlier slide of $44,000? The average PA salary? What's $44,000 minus $5,000? $39,000. You can still do a lot with that, right? This is an example of letting that statement, it's a steroid example of the earlier when we talked about just doing the thousand flat. But that still leaves the bulk of our page. Because here's the example where it really kicks in. What if, you know, this was taught in high school. This was on our high school diploma where we had to understand the consequences of our money choices before we read it. It'd be pretty powerful. What if as a result of that education, every 18 year old in the country started around their bed? You know, they chose a college that was $5,000 cheaper, or they tried what I tried, where I called both of my alma maters and said, stop increasing tuition and give a Roth IRA as a part of it. Neither said yes, unfortunately. Uh, but the point is, if every 18 year old in the country were to do this, two math questions, everyone in the room is going to know the answer. What's 22 minus 18? Four. There we go. That, that's what we all do, right? All right, what's four times 5,000? 20,000. So if we start four years earlier, we save an extra twenty thousand dollars. You know what the dollar amount for turn sixty-five? Seven point five million. Starting four years earlier, you're saving twenty thousand dollars extra in total. You're worth four million more when you're sixty-five. Even if at this point in the conversation you have no idea what a Roth IRA is with the S&P 500, or at least kind of excited, like those are big numbers, right? They're really big numbers, guys. And here's, the, uh, here's something positive for y'all to, uh, to think about. Is anyone in this room retiring at 65? Students? No. No. It's not even going to be close. So guys, here's the beauty. That last number we just talked about at 18 to 65, guess what? Let's presume that all of you are going to retire at 7. That lets you, gives you time to have a plan in place by the age of 23. Because 23 to 70 is the same as 18 to 65 plus a year. It's kind of exciting, isn't it, guys? Next slide. Uh, so just, this is my full disclosure on the S&P 500 since I do work in the industry. Uh, on, the far, on the far left, because just in case you get really excited here, I'll go home and log online, call your parents, or call your bank, and want to try to do this. The single worst year on history for the S&P 500 is down 40%. If that happens and you take Gene's advice, are you going to be happy with me? Probably not. But just for you. And you live in a little bit of a you won't be mad at uh, The single best year in history, plus 51%. We don't care what happens in a year, guys. The far right are 20 year averages. The best 20 years of history of the SP 500 is 18%. The worst is 6%. 6% is still pretty good. The point is the younger you start, the bigger the number of uh, I, I don't need to talk in kind of the industry to do it, so I'm happy to ask any specific questions on this if you have to have to work. Here's what I want you to do that we do, do this, what my sister-in-law did. Uh, started her operation to teach for America at $27,000 a year and paying off student loans at Syracuse University. If it was $2,000 in her operation, she texted me, no joke, every day in the first two weeks, telling me how much dollars she made. <laughs> 
just log in that closely. And then, then I started getting texts like every few days, and then they started to a few weeks apart. I don't think I've ever heard of you. I don't think she said I've ever heard of you. Um, just joking, she probably didn't. Um, but the point is, she got bored. She has $10 for every paycheck going into this. She just didn't care. That's the right way to do it. You don't need to follow it every day. Just do it, you can order it to yourself. Fourth, this is again industry lingo, and I, in 30 seconds, I'm just going to say the red lines on the top there, and what it is, it shows what most Americans do. If you take Gene's advice today, and the S&P 500 drops, you're going to be mad at me, you're going to sell your stocks, you're never going to buy them again. Huge mistake, guys. The S&P 500 is the 500 largest companies in the United States. Who my sister in law did, like $10 a month on the paycheck, just do it. Because when we did that in my mother-in-law's kitchen, my mother-in-law actually, after we had done it all, kind of very kind of like cruel, you know, I'll use polite terms, uh, said that, congratulations, Kate, that you're not gambling the like way the stock market. I said that actually very politely right here. Uh, when, but but then any time that happens, I can step back and say, what's the situation with my mother-in-law's correct? My sister-in-law is truly gambling the like way. Well, that would be correct if all five of those companies could pay. That'd be really bad, I guess. <coughs> really bad. So the companies that you're going to be working for since they probably met. Uh, so that's the devil's advocate scenario. Here's my concluding slide. <coughs> and then I'm, again, I'm kind of happy to say, as long as you guys would like to talk to me, you guys are that little orange bubble. Consider that blue bubble, you know, the world that you're graduating into. Every single one of your friends, your brothers, your sisters, your neighbors, your neighbor's sons, not going to make it very well. They're not all in this world. They're not all being taught that. It's a big, big problem. I can tell you from the industry, we believe that this is the single biggest problem facing both America and your generation. Those of you that take charge, that take control of your financial future starting today, either with actions or with the creation of a plan, will have a big advantage over your counterparts that are not doing so. Trust me. That deeper into that conversation. Uh, let's go questions first, but I do want to do some action items for your follow I'm not sure if the slides are not. There's just the two action items before that I will we can say and talk. Here's the two action items. Uh, because what we're seeing is a lot of schools aren't taking steps like Westminster is taking. So the student bodies that are driving this kind of initiatives to teach basic money choices. We have a student panel that takes place in Pittsburgh in the spring. Last year, uh, there were that group of majors from Westminster was actually on the panel. And this year marks the fourth year of the panel. First year that's going to be run entirely by students. It's going to be a senior group of names, going to be a charity program. Any student in any school in the area that would like to be on this committee to help shape this event is welcome. So get in touch with Jim or Jesse if you want to help shape this event. Go on to missingsemester.com to see Brittany's questions that she was asked last year to get a feel. But the goal is to take the kind of enthusiasm you guys might have and make it contagious to the schools that aren't being taught. Second is um, the creation of personal financial plans. Um, the big thing that we're doing in schools across Pittsburgh, if you don't need to be taking a specific class, if you can take ownership of your future, it would have been a We'll talk more about that tomorrow. Also. Thank you. Gene is going to be back tomorrow uh, with four students who are going to be part of a panel discussion. And so if you'd like to, they're going to ask, he's going to ask them questions, they're going to respond, and then he's going to reflect on their answers. So if you'd like to be a part of that, that'll start at 11.40 and go to about 1230. You can grab some lunch and bring it with you to the chapel for that event. Uh, but again, we thank you, we thank the choir. Uh, may the Lord bless you and you go forward.